Hi guys, uh, so this week for reading, we're going to actually be reading um, two different texts um, we're, and compare and contrast them, super fun. Um, we're gonna just start with the one today. Um, this first one that we're starting with, they're both about music. The first one that we're starting with is a, actually instructional material uh, by a woman named Fran Lance. Fran Lance uh, uh, sadly died back in 2004. Rest um, in peace, Fran. But before she died, uh, she wrote uh, more than 30 books for people your age, which is pretty impressive. Um, she started learning guitar when she was 13 years old. And uh, she tried to become a rock musician. It didn't go super well. So she became a writer instead about music. Close enough. <laughs> um, so anyway, some things I want you to pay attention to while we're reading this. Um... I want you to pay attention in both stories today and the other one I'll read on Wednesday um, to the author's diction. Um, diction is a person's choice of words. Um, diction is just one element of an author's voice. Um, voice is the way that he or she uses language. And then um, all of that is part of tone, which is kind of the author's attitude toward um, the subject and toward you as the audience. So three things we're thinking about. Diction, those that's a um, person's choice of words, which is part of voice, which is the way or he or she uses language. And all of that is part of tone, which is the author's attitude toward you, the reader, and toward the subject that they're writing. So three things to pay attention to while we're reading both articles today and Wednesday. Um, so again, this first one is an instructional material by Fran Lance. It's called Developing Your Chops. If you would like to read along with me, that would be fantastic. I'm going to start on page 305. So I'll give you a second to turn to page 305 in your books um, or to find them on your computer. If for some reason you're unable to access it, please listen carefully as I read, and you're going to need to find a way to access it, obviously, to do questions later. So, 305. 305. Developing your chops. 305. It's just like being back in class, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So, if you want to make it happen and make it in new music, you have to pay your dues. Turning to page 306. Initially, there's a feeling of potential of power when you strap on an electric guitar and then you learn that it's really about uh, what it's really about is controlling that power you choose the edge and rolling stone at last you've got it in your hands your very own instrument if you're like most beginners you're loved you love just looking at it and touching it guitarist michael petraca remembers his first gibson les paul electric guitar i was crazy about it he says i used to take it out of the case and just look at it i think i polished it about five times a day but you can't sit around swooning and sighing over your new instrument forever. Sooner or later, you're going to want to learn how to play it. But how? Show me how to do that. Many young players get their first lesson from a friend or relative. Carl Warme is a 25-year-old drummer, guitarist, and keyboard player. During high school and college in Toronto, Canada, he played in both cover bands and originals-only groups. Um, cover bands, if for some reason you don't know, they play music from other artists and bands. Um, I had a friend of mine teach me three chords, he remembers, and from there I just filled in the blanks. Beth Allen from the punk band PMS learned bass the same way. A friend showed me a couple of things on bass, and there was a local cover band, and whenever they played a Ramon song, they'd just let me come up and play. It was really easy, just three chords. Other people by learned by listening to records on the radio. In Fleetwood, My Life and Adventures with Fleetwood Mac, um, Mick Fleetwood says, by the time I was 13, I was beginning to be obsessed by drums. Dad bought me my first set of drums that year, and I taught myself to play by playing along with the radio. Guitar hero Jeff Beck was the same way. I was heavily influenced by James Burton with Ricky Nelson, he says in The Guitar Greats. I used to put the needle back again and again, slow it down a few times, and hear it backwards and forwards in every way, just to learn all the different ways it could be done, which is a really good way of learning. Um, the needle refers to listening to records, so like you have to lift the record needle to basically get to where you want in the song. Old-timey way of listening to music. <laughs> in 
Kim Thale, guitarist for Soundgarden, started at age eight by picking out the theme song to the Beatles cartoon on television. I never took a lesson, just the radio jamming serendipity, he told guitar player. Learning to play by listening and repeating what you've heard is called playing by ear. If you got a good ear, or wonder of wonders, perfect pitch, the ability to identify individual notes simply by hearing them, consider yourself lucky. You probably won't need a lot of training to learn your instrument. You'll just pick it up by listening, observing, and practicing. Most people, however, are only so-so at playing by ear, and some are practically tone deaf. If you haven't got a great ear, you would do well to take a few lessons. Finding your personal pop professor. Joe Broccoli has been playing the guitar professionally for over 25 years. He's performed in top 40 bands and country bands in Rhode Island, Hawaii, California, and Texas. But his talent isn't all natural. He took lessons from age 10 until he was 16. Drummer Peter um, Markowicz took less lessons at school. Later, he studied with some real pros. Dave Garibaldi from the premier West Coast funk band Tower of Power and L.A. studio drummer Ralph Humphrey. Bill Payne, renowned sessions player and keyboardist with little feet, took piano lessons for 13 years. Rocker Willie Nile studied classical piano as a child. And Will Calhoun, the drummer with Living Color, studied per percussion at Boston's uh, Berklee School of Music. Even some seasoned veterans feel the need for more lessons. After five albums and years of touring, New York rocker Marshall Crenshaw decided he needed to learn a few new tricks on the guitar. It paid off, too. There's a song on my new album called Fantastic Planet of Love, he told a musician, and it contains every chord I learned in guitar lessons. For the beginning musician, the challenge is finding a teacher who knows his stuff and can really inspire you. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. I think what happens a lot of times is you get these stuffy old teachers that just live in the neighborhood, like somebody's grandmother, Peter Markowitz suggests, and you need more out of it. Or sometimes the teacher doesn't teach the kind of music you want to learn. I was dying to take piano lessons, Carl Warmy remembers, and when I finally got them, I hated them. It wasn't what I imagined it was going to be, I guess because I wasn't playing Elvis Presley songs. Try to keep your expectations realistic. Some young musicians think they're going to learn to play like Eddie Van Halen or Neil Pert in three lessons. Face it. Your first few weeks of lessons will consist mainly of learning how to play individual notes and chords. Then you can graduate to simple two or three chord songs. The key is balance. Look for a teacher who spends part of each lesson teaching you theory and part of it helping you learn how to play your favorite tunes. To find your pop professor, ask around. Maybe one of your friends can lead you to a good teacher. Check out your local music stores. Most of them offer lessons. Music teachers also advertise in the newspapers or post their names on bulletin boards and music shops. Some list their names in the yellow pages. Well, you can tell this was written a while ago. <laughs> uh, yellow pages were um, part of an actual book called a phone book. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those before. <laughs> before you sign up with a teacher, talk to him or her. Find out what style of music he teaches, what sort of lesson books he uses, what kind of music he plays at home. Tell him what style of music you want to learn to play. If you love heavy metal and your prospective teacher plays in a bluegrass band on the weekends, odds are you weren't cut out for each other. When you finally do sign up for lessons, don't judge your teacher on the basis of one meeting. Give yourself at least three weeks to decide whether you like him or not. During the trial period, listen carefully to everything he says and practice hard. If after three weeks you decide you aren't hitting it off, quit and find a new teacher. Lessons really make you very self-disciplined, says guitarist Joe Broccoli. They also give you a broader concept of what music is, what makes a jazz riff different from a blues riff or a rock riff. Of course, not everyone has the time or money to take lessons. As a teenager growing up in Miami, Florida, singer Gloria Estefan was too busy caring for her ailing father to study music. So she found a way to take guitar lessons for free. She taught herself by reading songbooks she took out of the library. Name that note. If you take lessons, your teacher will probably want you to learn some music theory. Many musicians think reading music is an essential part of playing an instrument, especially if you hope to make music your career. If you really want to get serious and be a studio music musician, you can't do anything unless you can read music, Joe Broccoli insists. If you have an hour to learn a track exactly the way it's written, the producer is not going to stand there while you try to figure out what the note is. Other people disagree. You don't need to know how to read music to play rock and roll, Michael Petraca argues. I used to give guitar lessons, and I had students who were so bound by the formal rules of music that they learned they couldn't relax and improvise. Admittedly, many, many world-famous rock musicians can't read a note of music but some wish they could. Paul Barrera, a hotshot studio guitarist and a member of the influential band Little Feet, 
Since the Fiddy could live his career over again, I would have learned how to read music. If you really have a working knowledge of music, it opens up the doors to being a lot more creative. Rapper Q-Tip of A Tribe Called Quest is another example. He knows how to play electric bass by ear, but that isn't enough for him. You know what I really want to do? He told Rap Express. I want to go back to school and study music theory, and then I want to learn how to play a real bass. Woodshedding. Whether you learn the subtleties of music theory or just play by ear, uh, woodshedding is slang for practicing, by the way, the secret of success is practice, practice, practice. And don't think the rock and roll greats didn't have to practice hard to learn their instruments. I literally shut myself away for three or four years and learned properly, Pete Townsend says in The Guitar Greats. Jimi Hendrix's father, Al, says of his son, he used to practice a lot. I'd come home from work and he'd be there, plunk, plunk, plunk. I used to hear it constantly. Rappers need to practice, too. I have a hard time memorizing raps, says Pino. I say it over and over and keep the time in my tune in my head that I have in mind for the rap. That helps me memorize it. When you start out, you'll probably try to copy your idols. Solos which affected me could send a shiver up my spine, says Jimmy Page in The Guitar Greats. And I'd spend hours, in some cases days, um, trying to get them off. One of the favorites was the solo on the Elvis Presley record, Baby Let's Play House. But don't waste your time trying to emulate a player who is light years beyond you. You'll only become frustrated. Drummer Pete Markowitz remembers being in sixth grade and listening to Buddy Rich. The guy was so fast. To me, it was more intimidating than inspiring. Joe Broccoli kept his goals within reach. He listened to Gene Cornish, the guitar player with the 60s band The Young Rascals. They were the easiest band to copy. You could sit there and listen to the band a couple of times and know exactly what the chord changes were. And remember, no matter how famous you get, you still have to keep practicing. I like to learn, uh, like to leave no longer than a week between playings, Grateful Dead guitarist Jerry Garcia told musician. Otherwise, my technique starts to slide to the point where it takes me three weeks to get it back up. Kenny Jones has played drums with The Who and The Rolling Stones, but when he practices, he goes back to basics. Whenever I'm just playing on my own, I generally play jazz. It's the only form of drumming where you get to use all your um, paradiddles and bits and bobs. I don't know. I don't play drums. <laughs> in short, if you want to make it in music, you have to pay your dues. It's like the joke where the young musician is walking down the street in New York, and he stops an old guy to ask for directions. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? The young kid asks. The old man just smiles. Practice, my boy. Practice. All right. So, um, interesting. A little bit dated, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to give you some questions for this. They're in the attached doc uh, to work on. Um, you're going to need to complete this by Wednesday at noon. So again, just like with grammar, you've got a couple days to work on it. I do expect clear and complete sentences. If you have any questions with anything, um, please don't hesitate to ask on Google Classroom or have your parents shoot me an email, particularly during my office hours, 10 to 12. Um, and... That's about it. We'll get into the next story on Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed. I miss you guys. Bye.